once you go outside of the house, they're outside of the house rules now. They're going to the judicial branch to put Bannon in jail. Now, we or the judicial branch, executive branch, outside of the house, we can look at how you handled the process and say, nah, I don't like it. Middle MAGA. It's never been more clear to me who the bad guys are in this narrative, this novel, this real life simulation that it seems like we're living in. Most recent story here, Steve Bannon. We're going to talk about Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon's jail sentence was upheld by appeals court. This is a federal appeals court via X. I'm on the X verse again, the world's magazine, the world's newspaper. In a unanimous decision, this is written by Grok, I believe, the AI for X. In a unanimous decision, a federal appeals court has upheld the conviction of former Trump advisor Steve Bannon for defying a subpoena from the House Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. I am going to go into some details, not going to get too nerdy on it, but showing you the corruption, showing you how bad this really is, and showing you why I think Steve Bannon, Peter Navarro are American heroes uh, for what they're doing here. They're standing up as patriots. They're standing up to be martyred four months in prison. Steve Bannon doesn't need that. He's fine. He can live comfortably. This is this is the same type of energy our founding fathers had. Um, in in that it's not as much because they put their life on the line. Steve Bannon kind of is, but you know, this four you can't compare four months to what the founders did. But it's in that realm. It's more than a lot of people in our country are doing. The ruling announced today, that's May 10th, affirms Bannon's four-month jail sentence and marks a significant moment in the ongoing legal fallout from the Capitol riot. The decision, which was met with mixed reactions across social media, I don't have mixed reactions, I'm going to show you the details, effectively closes the door on Bannon's appeal process. They tie it in with J6, and then people who are normies, I don't blame them, they're going to work, they're doing whatever they need to do, they see, oh, De J uh, Steve Bannon got four months. It must have been some type of riot or something like that that he did. Uh, with legal experts suggesting that further appeals to the full court or the Supreme Court are unlikely to succeed, I don't believe experts anymore. I look into stuff and I don't. I haven't looked into this, so I don't know if this is true or not, if it's unlikely or not. But when I look into things, sometimes I agree with them, sometimes I don't, and. I've been pretty confident with the way things have played out, for my opinions. As the legal drama unfolds, it remains a hot topic on social media platforms, with users expressing a range of opinions and the implications of the ruling for accountability and the rule of law. How did we get here? Let's take a look. We are going back to the trial. I did some notes on this going back to 2022, almost two years ago exactly. Here's where we should start. June 30th of 2021, same year as J6, there was a House Resolution 503. It was passed as a rule. It established the unselect, the unpatriotic, the insurrectionist committee, the seditionist committee to investigate January 6th, the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. In regards to that, Five months later, Steve Bannon was indicted by a federal grand jury on two counts of contempt of Congress stemming from his failure to comply with a subpoena issued by the House Select Committee investigating. Remember, this is Benny Thompson, the black imam they put as the face of the J6 committee because they just, for whatever reason, they don't want a white face there. And they had Liz Cheney, fake, you know, Uniparty, Adam Kinzinger, Uniparty, they didn't have any MAGA Republican or anybody close to MAGA on the committee. The committee didn't follow its own rules. And we'll get to that. Steve Bannon has not been charged, never was charged with insurrection, conspiracy, sedition, or anything closely related. I think we should be investigating those who put together that committee, though. Here's Bannon's decisions. Bannon, on September 23rd, 2021, he got a letter. This is before they did the federal charges. 
he got a letter from Benny Thompson, the black imam I told about. The guy, he's, he's, I don't know, he might just be stupid. He's really weird when you hear him talk. It's almost like he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't, he's not very knowledgeable. He's basically like a black, older black John Fetterman. It demanded documents. He demanded documents as the face, the, the real movers and shakers with Liz Cheney and, and them. It demanded documents by 10721. It demanded Bannon to appear 1014 2021. And it referenced as its authority the House Resolution Rule 503. Steve Bannon could have gone in. The only two people who didn't were Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro. They said, no, nah, I don't recognize your authority. Everybody else that got subpoenaed, subpoenaed went in and basically said, I plead the fifth or I don't remember. Steve Bannon could have easily done that and he wouldn't have any jail time right now. If he had gone in and said, I don't remember, I don't remember, I don't remember, I plead the fifth, and it literally didn't answer a question, none of this would be happening. So he's doing it out of principle. Bannon chose not to comply, citing executive privilege. He said, wait a second, I got executive privilege. Uh, Mr. Bannon's communications with President Trump on the matters at issue in the subpoena are well within the scope of both the presidential communications and deliberative process executive privileges. As a result, in order to preserve the claim of the executive and others, I'm not going to comply. This is something that is not, it, there's still gray area here, but historically, our country rule is basically runs on trust. And we trusted that, okay, you kind of had communication with the president. We're not going to touch that. The trust is over. The gig's up. And I think it's good to rip the Band-Aid off. Continuing on, Bannon and Peter Navarro, as I said, are the only ones who did not comply with the J6 committee, completely non-compliant, because they're men of integrity, men of principle. Bannon could have complied and pled the fifth, and he would have avoided all of this. And he, there I have a picture of him smiling. All the paperwork references, this is the part here. All the paper, I'm not even doing the executive. I, the part I'm mad at is not even the executive privilege part. All the paperwork in here references the House Rule 503 as the authority. But the committee isn't following the rules of 503. The House can do whatever they want in the House. We have a separation of powers. They don't have to follow their own rules. If they're not following their own rules, it's up to the House to work that out. So let me be clear about that. And I have the receipts there. But here's where the problem stems from. The RNC challenged the legitimacy of the J6 committee based on H.R. 503. That, that was basically we made the J6 committee, stated eight Dems and five GOP were supposed to be on it. We only have seven Dems and two GOP, the fake GOP, Liz Cheney and Adam Kininger. Again, the House can do whatever they want. It doesn't matter. They don't have to follow their own rules. As long as the House doesn't have a problem with it, they can do whatever they want. I'm going to tell you where the problem comes, though. H.R. 503 stated a GOP ranking member. There is no GOP ranking member, and I forget the exact how that works. It's just a tenured member. A Trump, and these are very important because these are people who are accountable to you and I. They have a district back home. Do you want your representative on the J6 committee trying to um, get Steve Bannon to come in? No, they couldn't find one real Republican to do it. Liz Cheney got ousted in, in Wyoming. Uh, Adam Kissinger, Kissinger had to retire. You see what happened? They couldn't get a real person to put their district on the line for this. Still not a, my problem yet, though. A Trump-appointed judge ruled against the RNC. Okay. I still actually don't have a problem at this point. I think Steve Bannon is taking this case to the Supreme Court. Uh, that's what I said back in 2022. It sounds like they don't think it's going to go there. The Supreme, Court's a, the Supreme Court's a sham. I mean, they're taking their last case, and then they're going to be on, not vacation, but they're off-season. What is the purpose of this thing if they're taking breaks? I, I don't even understand that. Like, they're not, they still work, but they're not hearing any more cases. Why aren't we hearing cases 24-7? I don't even understand what that mean, why that why that is. The argument is the sham committee doesn't have subpoena power. This is where the problem comes. Where is it getting its subpoena power from? If the Supreme Court takes the case, there's no way they uphold the committee. The Supreme Court might not take this case. If they take this case, it's not going to be upheld. I guarantee that to you. 
I said I could be wrong about him trying to get to the Supreme Court. That's what I said in 2022, but obviously it looks like he is now, so I was right because I don't know what the timing would be. Yeah, we're two years later now. If there is an election, and that's another thing about the Supreme Court, it takes years to get there. It would, it's a four-month sentence. I mean, what are we doing? If there is an election in November and a red wave, this committee is done January, and it was done. The committee was done. There was no red wave, though. <laughs> kind of funny looking back at that. The only two Republicans that voted for H.R. Res. 503 were Adam Kissinger and Liz Cheney. They were the only two Republicans that put their district on the line to vote for that. I said, Bannon is brilliant. This is the art of war. He's using the aggressiveness of the J6 committee against them. And then he went on a rant outside the courtroom. And that's what I was talking about there. Bannon is turning himself into a political martyr to rally the populist right into controlling the corporate GOP after the red wave. And right now, that's the same thing. He's rallying. I'm up, I am highly upset about this. He's going to be convicted and serve time. I was right about that. Probably months. It's kind of interesting looking back at this. I was right about that, too. He knows this is going to enrage the populist right. I don't know if it's going to enrage anybody. Everybody, the populist right right now is... I, I did a joke meme on X with Trump in jail saying, if only I said Trump in jail and he had his hand down and it was like, I said, Trump pondering how to better support Israel in this difficult time while he's in jail. Same thing with Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon tries to dance around it, but he's a Zionist too. How about you spend those four months in jail, Bannon, thinking about how you can better assist Israel? Congratulations. Side thread covering uncivil law and my strong disagreement with this constitutional and uh, civil law. Oh, God, he, had, he was so off on that. Uncivil law thought that they had subpoena party power. So uncivil law, so cringe, so freaking cringe here. Let me play this clip. I stand by my take against him. They're missing three members of the minority. Congress should be required by amendment to actually follow the rules they make. Yeah, this is the thing, though. Say they don't have to. See, see, this is, man, I don't know, man. I just, he just rubs me the wrong way sometimes. Let me bring it back so you know what, this is, he's talking about what we're talking about. They're missing three members of the minority. Congress should be required by amendment to actually follow the rules they make. So he talked about what we're talking about, the, the HR, the, the actual resolution. It's not a bill, though. It's just a resolution, meaning the, just House rules. You can change House rules. You can ignore House rules. So the rule was you're supposed to have five members and only had two. So the person chatted on civil law and said they're missing three. They shouldn't have. Congress should be required by amendment to actually follow the rules they make. Yeah, this is the thing, though. Say they don't have to. See, I agree with that. They don't have to follow their rules. We're going to get to where the problem is, though. You, you have to really compartmentalize this thing. Because Congress is the sole judge of its own rules. Okay, I, I agree. So that's easy. Like, if you want to ask, is Congress in compliance with its own rules, ask Congress. I agree. Because the Constitution says that. It's in the Constitution. Well, it's just separation of powers. It's not complicated. So each house, of, each house is in charge of its own rules. So if the rules say, okay, we're supposed to have so many members of the majority and so many members of the minority, as long as the House itself is the one that creates the committee, they don't have to follow their own rules because they're in the House's rules. And they can waive their own rules. So... Yeah, it's a total non-starter. The, the rules are only binding on the House as long as they want them to be. I agree. Because they're, 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 they're the sole judge of their own rules. So, yeah. And where, where the problem comes, though, is when they want to go to the judicial branch. So they take their rules, they have their House rules, and that's where he's wrong. He, I, didn't, I don't think I clipped the part where he was wrong. Let me double check and see. Yeah, I'll go on. Let me just tell you, and then I'll go on and see if I followed up um, on this. Yes, you're right. But once you go outside of the House, they're outside of the House rules now. They're going to the judicial branch to put Bannon in jail. Now, we, or the judicial branch, executive branch, outside of the House, we can look at how you handled the process and say, nah, I don't like it. You, you can do whatever you want in your house, but now you filed a subpoena. Now we got lawyers involved. Now you're in the judicial branch. You're not in the house anymore. You, and it wasn't, it wasn't not even the house and the Senate. It's just the house. Wait a second. You think, you think I had to uphold a subpoena? No, no, no. Let me look and see what your process was for the subpoena. 
There, that's the separation of powers. That's how it's supposed to work. Asshats like uncivil law say, oh, they can make their own house rules, so then they can subpoena outside of the house based on some nonsense house rules. Oh, no, you can't. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. They, the judicial, the judi- the judi- judicial branch can agree with the house, but they can also disagree with the house. And I'm very disappointed in lawyers with terrible takes. Just you've been in law school and all that work. What did they teach you? I've never been to law school. And I'm confident that you're wrong. Not I'm so confident. I think you're an asshat. He believes that the house doesn't have to follow its own rules and the judicial branch still has to honor it. To hell they do. <laughs> of course they don't. Must be crazy. Maybe, hopefully I'm misinterpreting his take because that's just like basic civics. He's interpreting that to mean the subpoena from Congress can't be challenged based on the rules behind it. That's one hell of a leap from saying Congress can make their own rules. <laughs> that doesn't mean we have to uphold their rules in a different branch. I think I'll just gonna let me see if I will I'll end it here. I believe uncivil law is referring to Article One, Section Five of the Constitution. Each house may determine the rules of its proceeding, punish its members for disorderly behavior, and with the concurrence of two thirds, expel a member. I think that's where he was talking about, which I agree, uh, which where I agree. So I think I'll just leave it at there. I think that's probably where I ended it. Probably ran out of time or something like that. But let me know what you think. I just want to, is there a value to that? Breaking it down. I know that he's breaking it down to a level that's, you can even get more nerdier than that. The lawyers do. I like their show on law. I, I can't, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if there's any value on this channel to get more nerdier than that. But you see the problem I have. You see why I hold, uphold Steve Bannon, Peter Navarro in high heights. Tying it back in, we've been talking about Tim Pool a lot. Tim Pool platformed both of them. Now Tim Pool has law flair against him because there's this more Mauricio-ass person that had the same first and last name as a person who did a crime and then there was a mix up there why are they going after tim pool stephen crowder platform kerry lake but tim nobody platforms maga like tim pool cash patel he platform all of them cash patel steve bannon peter navarro peter navarro and steve bannon both gonna get locked up so I appreciate anybody platforming. It's a risk. You're putting yourself out there. You don't have to do it. You can go get some OF ho to put on your podcast and get them and get 10 million views. Even Tim could do that. Instead, you platform them. Respect to that. Let me know what you think. Visit the website, middlemaga.com. Top right, put in your email address. I don't know. We got to do something. We There's got to be something tangible to be done to combat this and in 2022, I said MAGA was going to get riled up. I don't think MAGA's riled up. Middle MAGA.